Who's a cheater? Is anybody cheating tonight? <laughs> anybody got anything they want to admit to? Come on now. Nobody. Okay. All right. Okay. Statistically, that's a lie, but cool. Good for you guys. Good. I'm proud of you. That's great. <laughs> I'm not a cheater. I've been with my wife for 15 years, never cheated. I think that's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bar is low, but I'm going to accept that applause. Yes, I am a phenomenal person. Yeah. Never cheated. Pretty good. It's pretty good. Never cheated. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Also, never been offered, so it's pretty easy. I, <laughs> I would. I don't even like her. Honestly, I am actively trying. I just, nobody's taking the bait, you know? <laughs> no, number one reason I don't cheat is I love my wife. Um, but also, I, I want to be a good guy, and I, I don't think I honestly always have been. I grew up around a lot of toxic masculinity, and it got projected onto me a lot, because I'm a bigger guy, I'm 6'5", I have a deep voice, strong stash, we can be honest about things. <laughs> I'm a pretty masculine package, honestly, I am. My last name is Sir, S-I-R. <laughs> My name is Henry Sir, I sound like an American hero from G.I. Joe. <laughs> Sometimes people call me Mr. Sir. I'm like, I can't handle this power, please. Just, <laughs> ah, ah! <laughs> I don't want to just point the finger, though. I want to do a better job of holding myself accountable for when I've been a part of the problem, because we all have. I grew up in the 90s and the 2000s. I know I have. I'm not trying to be edgy. I'm just being honest. I grew up in that crazy era where we called everything gay. <laughs> don't lie. I know you did. <laughs> I'm from Canada, and we did. I know you guys did. <laughs> I've read a history book. I know you guys did. We didn't even have freedom. We were doing it. I know you guys were doing it with all the freedom, with all the freedom eagles soaring in the sky all the time and those freedom amendments of yours. I know you were doing it. I'm not condoning it. I feel terrible. It's very ignorant. I feel really bad for the actual gay kids that impacted, but at the time, that didn't stop us from calling literally, literally everything gay. Didn't even have to be people. Concepts were gay. Someone would be like, hey man, you wanna go swimming? And other guy's like, nah, swimming's gay. And everyone's like, that's a perfectly valid reason to not go swimming, yeah, 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 swimming is a pinch. Gay, come to think of it, we better steer clear a couple alpha male nine-year-olds like us. We, uh, we have an image to maintain on these streets of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We can't partake in such cuckery like swimming. That'd be ridiculous. It's true, everything was gay. I was gay, my dad, gay. Every man I ever met growing up was gay for some reason. Because that's all I meant to be a man. Is you sit there, you call things gay, then you get called gay, and the cycle repeats forever, and you bottle it up so you don't snap, because if you snap, they're all gonna call you gay. <laughs> but then you end up snapping because you bottled it up, and you were gay the whole time. There was nothing you could do. It was a tough spot where the last thing you wanted to be called was gay, and there was literally nothing you could do that wasn't gonna make you gay. You get caught reading a book, Matt got braces, he was gay. Chris tried out for volleyball, gay. Colin was dating Cheryl, most of the guys liked Cheryl. Colin was the gayest guy in all of Canada. And we told Colin all the time. I'm from Alberta, Canada, that's like the cowboy, oil rig, tough guy province. You, if you had a vegetable, if you got caught eating a vegetable, is a better way of saying that. If you got caught eating something with a vitamin in it, all the old guys in their denim tuxedos, like, ah, oh, it's rabbit's food, what are you doing, son? Be a man. Be a man, eat a steak, be a straight man, eat a steak. Put a nice, thick, juicy piece of meat in your mouth like a straight man. <laughs> Ditch the salad. I'm the youngest of four brothers. When I was 13, I wrote a poem and they found it. <laughs> yeah. I've been in witness protection ever since. <laughs> I haven't seen my family in 20 years. I didn't move to the States, I was relocated. I had no choice. All because I tried to express myself creatively when I was a child. We were such lazy hypocrites. We'd go around calling everything gay and then that same night we'd have a sleepover. What are we doing? It's a very romantic notion. Essentially what we're saying to each other is, listen man, I like being with you so much that even when we sleep, I, uh, I think it's best that we're together. I really do. <laughs> I, I want to start tomorrow morning off right. I want to be looking at you the literal second I open my eyes because God, this connection we have is special and I just love you so much. I want to do everything with you. That's nice. I feel like guys should be able to express that to one another. We can't, you can't say anything even close to that. You can't say anything. I would make this mistake at a sleepover. I would just say good night. 
I would get verbally tarred and feathered for saying good night. <laughs> Sleep over with a bunch of guys in Alberta, Canada. I'd just be like, oh, good night, guys. You're like, oh, don't be gay. That's what did it, it was me saying good night. That's what tarnished this otherwise oozing machismo bravado filled event it was me saying good night. Look at the buildup. Look at where we are. This has been a dance of seduction. <laughs> We've been courting each other, man. We made plans on Monday. This is literally all I've been able to think about. <laughs> I have been losing sleep with anticipation for this night. Spent a lovely afternoon through evening with one another. I'm way further with this dude I'd ever been with a girl. <laughs> Sleeping in the same bed in our boxers, the water bed. There's a lava lamp on. There's a lava lamp on next to my head. But that's fine. Is that I said good night. The lava lamp, that's fine. It's a couple guys. A couple guys. A couple bulls. A couple bulls locking horns. It's just a couple guys. We might lock horns, there's a distinct possibility. Because at some point tonight, we're gonna be face to face, breath to breath, completely erect. So that is a distinct <laughs> possibility. We would project weakness onto things that just aren't weak. We'd make fun of male cheerleaders. Have you ever seen a male cheerleader up close in the flesh? It's horrifying. It's like when you see a moose in the woods, you're just like, my God, the sheer, the sheer size of this beast, it's magnificent. <laughs> male cheerleaders, man, don't sleep on them. Built like a fridge, stallion, thoroughbred just doing standstill backflips because he's in the mood. This guy is a trained assassin. This is a problem out on the streets. <laughs> guys are so ignorant. They hear dude's a male cheerleader, like, pansy, kick that guy's ass. A male cheerleader would destroy me <laughs> if I ever got in a fight with him. We wouldn't even have to throw a punch. He just grab me, flip me like 18 feet in the air. <laughs> Couple steps back, not catch me. What am I gonna do? It's game over. <laughs> I'm a heap on the floor. He's thrown in all these cocky little victory dances just to taunt me. <laughs> what a dick. Male cheerleading is some of the most toxic masculinity you're ever gonna see in your life. Just some way over the top, unnecessarily yoked up dude, literally throwing women around. It's like, ah! We're like, man, this guy's such a boss. Look at those glutes, unreal. <laughs> I joke about things, I joke about things, and I, I, I it, really though, I hate ignorance. I hate ignorance of all kinds. Um, and homophobia the most. This isn't to be preachy, but it, it hits really close to home to me because I joke about how my brothers made fun of me, but then you get older, you mature, life happens, and it just, homophobia hits really close to home because one of my brothers is gay. So, yeah. <laughs> I think he's gay. I tell him he's gay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> huh? Get out of here in a sec. I, uh, I, I, I try and be a progressive guy. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be. Um, <laughs> and that's not because my politics are changing. It's just the world's changing so fast. And I think that's how it works. You, you, you think you have the right idea, then a few decades later, you're a barbarian, right? That's how it goes. And we're not gonna be immune to that. That's gonna happen to us. And I worry, what's gonna be the thing that makes me the old angry white guy I grew up around but never wanted to be? I think I know. Robots are here, cyborgs. Yeah, cyborgs are coming. I'm not making this up. Some people are already advocating for robot rights. It's scary. So what if I have a daughter and in 30 years she's coming home telling me how she's marrying a mandroid or something like that, you know? Now all of a sudden I'm the old angry white dad. It's like, no, uh-uh. No, 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 no. I don't think so. Not a chance. Not in a million years. My little girl is not marrying one of them. I don't think so. What if she's telling me I'm robophobic? What if I'm a robophobe? What if I'm robophobic? If robophobia is a thing, I'm going to be a rampant robophobe. I'm not, I'm not gonna be a closet robophobe. I'm not doing the whole look both ways. Well, I'm not robophobic, but no, 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 no. <laughs> the only thing you're gonna know about me is that I'm robophobic, huge part of my brand. I'm gonna be calling them robos and things like that. You know? <laughs> Fuck those robos, I can't stand them. I'm gonna have all sorts of robophobic gear, like shirts and hats and flags in my truck that say no robo and stuff like that, you know? <laughs> Those fucking robos stealing all of our jobs, fucking up our economy, I hate them! It's goddamn robos. That's gonna be the thing, that makes me the old angry white guy. I'm just sitting around, pissed all the time, nothing's even happened, I'm just like, ah, I can't, I can't have any fun anymore. Can't do anything, PC police, can't do anything. I, 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 I can't watch RoboCop anymore, because you just cop, everybody shits a brick. <laughs> I, I, I can't do the robot at weddings anymore, because it's cultural appropriation. <laughs> What if that's like the most problematic thing you can do 20 years from now, full body robot? <laughs> There's gonna be video surfacing of me just lighting it up at my buddy's wedding. It's so problematic. It's gonna be like the 2050s watered down version of blackface or something. It's just over for me because I did full body robot. No career aspirations from here on out. There's literally nothing I can do career wise. I'm just gonna have to like 
move back to Canada and become prime minister or something like that. That's literally all I can. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. I'm Henry Sir. I love you so much, Benny.